Let's talk about Carmela Soprano's romantic endeavors. First, Father Phil and Tintola. How do you think I feel having that priest around all the time? Don't even go there, all right? Father is a spiritual mentor. He's helping me to be a better Catholic. Darn, these laser discs are incredible. And he comes over to the Soprano home one night when Tony and Meadow are away visiting colleges. This is the body of Christ. When it comes down to it, they almost kissed and went at it. Carmela told Father Phil that Anthony Jr. is going to be sleeping his friends. So, let's go. So nothing physical ends up happening between them that night, but the next morning, Carmela puts on her best face of denial. When I look some way? There was no big deal, no worries. When she says that he better get out because Anthony Jr.'s home, he probably should have left a little bit before then. I mean, I know Anthony Jr. isn't exactly the brightest crayon in the box, but... I imagine it might come up in conversation that he saw Father Phil there in the morning and his car was there all night. But I guess at the end of the day, you shouldn't get in trouble for playing name that Pope for 12 hours. What's the big deal? They're friends. When I saw him the other day, he looked at me with this intensity. You know, if you really want to discuss this, I think we should include Tony in the conversation as well. Vic Musto, a.k.a. The Wallpaper Man. Carmela meets Vic Musto in Season 2, Episode 10, Bust Out, because Christine, a woman she's friends with, who happens to be married to Davy Scatino, is Vic's sister. So Vic comes by the house to pick Christine up, and that's how they meet. I'm uh, bonded, state certified, but I'm still dangerous. Don't even think about it. She's married to Tony Soprano. Just a uh, grass cloth, maybe, or... Oh, Jesus. Now, I have some conflicting feelings about Christine. She tells Vic right away, it's Tony Soprano's wife, don't go near her. But then, when she's eating lunch with Carmela, she jokes about how... Oh, well, the dream was your subconscious telling you you want to have them wallpaper your dining room, that's all. I would think that Christine wouldn't want to encourage that from her, but you never know. So Carmela gets all excited, like a young schoolgirl in love, when Vic calls her and she invites him over the next day for lunch. Fucking Tony Soprano. All right? Yeah. Tony fucking Soprano. It's a bust out. And then the next morning... Ramon! Morning, Mrs. Uh, Victor Musto. Carmela, he didn't show up that day because of who your husband is. Face it. Use your head. He pissed his pants. Carmela accidentally bumps into Vic at his store. Not really. She knows he works there. But she goes there and she tells him thank you for the both of them. Because maybe someday she'll be free. But if they had really done something, it would have been bad for the both of them. Vic's like shitting his pants because he thinks that someone's going to come around from the corner and shoot him or beat the shit out of him. So he's really happy when she leaves and nothing happens to him. Maybe someday I will be free. But if you would come that day, bye, Vic, and take care of yourself. Oh, thank Christ. Furio Junta. So Furio comes to the house every morning during the week, and Carmela makes him coffee, and they sit and chat while Tony's getting ready. And Carmela really takes a liking to him. He gives her attention, he shows interest in what she has to say. She really feels like you know, she and this guy have this connection. Nothing physical between them ever happens. Rosalie mentions to Carmela that that's probably a good idea, but she was really falling for him. I never thank you for helping me. That's okay. You're a very special woman. I would love to go with you there. Great, uh, it's a date then. He disappears. In Eloise, after the night before, he went out with Tony and the guys. Plus. 
Tony tells Carmela that Furio left a message at the Bing at four in the morning saying that he's going back to Italy, but we have no way of confirming that for sure. We also can't say for sure that it didn't happen, but again, if we think back to a couple of other murders that were explained away by someone just disappearing, like Ralph, for example, we know that there's sometimes more than what meets the eye or the ear. <laughs> Mr. Wegler, guidance counselor of Anthony Jr. Carmela meets Mr. Wegler when she goes to AJ's school to have a meeting with a guidance counselor about his grades and his graduation and college applications. Hey, have you read Madame Bovary? No. It's almost a perfect novel. Flaubert writes about bourgeois loneliness, emptiness, destroys herself for some fantasy in her head. It's great, it's truly, it's truly great. Somehow horrifically funny, though tragic. I think you might enjoy it. And she's pretty into him. They go out on a few dates, and this is while Carmela and Tony are separated, mind you, so they're living in separate houses. I have met this Mr. Fisk. He is a cold fish. Couldn't you or one of the other teachers talk to him, tell him how hard AJ's trying? This moment when Carmela is coming home from her date with Mr. Wegler, it looks like she's almost trying to sneak in the house quietly, like she's a teenager who came home late after curfew doing something bad. So that's just, just wanted to mention that. It seems like she is getting almost a thrill from the sneaking around, but then she also recognizes the reality of the situation. Being discreet, right? It's like you have this secret. You know, you want to scream to the world. Yeah, but do yourself a favor, though, huh? But, according to Mr. Wegler, he thinks she's a user. So that didn't end very well. Take it easy. Believe it or not, I thought you cared about me. I just thought you should know how I feel. Fuck you. You better watch your step. The last time that Carmela sees Mr. Wegler is in cold cuts. And this is when they have their very literal cold cut. I began to really rue what happened. I was probably I'm going back with my husband. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, all the best. Last but certainly not least, the spec house. Uh, I need something else in my life. You want another kid? No. Well, what did I say? Is it beautiful? Oh my God, the building department. They're repealing the stop work order on my spec house. Construction may begin immediately. Tony, is this you? This is the best Christmas present I could ever get. Oh. You should be that man of God. I got meetings with carpenters. Fringe rich a little light in the Timberlands, huh? Everybody's always gay with you. He's a good looking guy, that's all.